It's DC versus Maryland this week. Which of the two is the better place to live? It's rack em up, stack em up. Let's go. Hello kitties, my name is Rogan and this is this Bahamian gal, your ultimate guide to the Bahamas and Washington DC. What's poppin'? So about two weeks ago, I gave you a video on DC versus Virginia. If you have not seen it, please click up here. Um, because I did not want to put everything together. I wanted to separate them because I know a lot of people want to know what it's like to live in Maryland versus DC, DC versus Virginia. So if you have not seen that video, you know what to do. Most of the people who are going to come across this video are individuals who are moving to the area and they are trying to stack up DC versus Maryland versus Virginia. And so if that's you, then you've really come to the right place. I also want to say it's hard to say which one is the better place. I can only give you pros and cons for both. Um, and the reason I say that is because everybody's lifestyle is different. Everybody's money is different. Everybody's wants are different. I also want to give a disclaimer about my video. This is for educational purposes only, but of course the statistics that I give will change, you know, very rapidly. So make sure to check in with the relevant authorities or agencies if you need more updated information, because what is true today will not be true in a month, a year, five years from now. So for those of you who don't know, I live in Washington, D.C. I spend a great deal of time in Virginia, Maryland of the three of the DMV is probably the place that I go to the least unless I have um, an appointment somewhere or I'm going shopping or something like that. I rarely go to Maryland. So I wanted to break this video down into several categories because these are the things that people ask me a about a lot. Um, and I wanted to just address them because this is what's going to be their determining factors um, when deciding if they're going to live in DC or Maryland. So let's just jump right in. The first thing you need to know about Maryland and DC is that there is a huge disparity in terms of population size. I mean, I don't think anybody doubts that. Um, DC is significantly smaller than Maryland. Maryland as of today has a population of over 6 million people, 6,174,610 people to be exact. Whereas DC only has 712,000, a little over 712,000 people uh, living in the district. Let's talk about the cost of living. The cost of living in both DC and Maryland are extremely high. Maryland is one of the wealthiest states in the United States. We have like three localities that are like known as the, like the top three wealthiest, and that's Montgomery County, Howard County, and Calvert County. Those places are really, 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 really wealthy. And if you drove through there, you would definitely see um, the significant difference between that those places and say like if you were like in Baltimore. I think on some level, I kind of got turned off from Maryland and this has nothing to do with Maryland itself. I used to watch like Braxton Family Values and anybody who has watched that show, you know the Braxtons are from Maryland, Severn, Maryland. And I used to hear, <clears throat> what's her name, Tamar Braxton, just, you know, she, it seemed like she hated Maryland. I think she had an appreciation for it because that's her home, but it just seemed like it was like nothing there. And compared to DC, it's just not as exciting, I will say. Um, you have some places where, you know, are gorgeous and like, you know, they might be popping for a moment, but they don't have that consistent, um, entertainment as far as I'm concerned that DC has. So when it comes to the entertainment side of things, um, and having things to do, I feel like around the clock, then DC is definitely going to win in that area. I mentioned in the previous video that DC has a very high cost of living. Gas tends to be really high here. Um, just overall shopping at the food store, you'll find that prices are significantly higher in the city versus if I were to go shopping in Maryland or Virginia. Um, Maryland can be really high too as far as, you know, some groceries, but it really just depends on where you go. I've often found that um, gas prices are much lower in Maryland and in um, uh, Virginia than in DC. So that definitely, if you're gonna have a car, that definitely is something you need to consider. Um, whether you want to do that and if you're going to be in Maryland because the public transportation isn't um, the way it is in DC you are going to need a car and it's such a vast uh, space that you definitely will need to get around so something to consider because if you're gonna get a car you're gonna be paying a lot of money in gas let's talk about the weather um, I remember when I first was coming here um, to, to, to live in DC people would always talk about how the weather was very mild even in like the winter like you know sometimes they'd have like these one-off um, seasons where like it was like a lot of snow but that's not the norm like even this this winter season has not been brutal I remember last winter was you know we had more snow days and um, you know it's gotten cold but it's not ridiculous it's not like you have to shovel snow or anything like that to a significant um, 
to in, in any significant way this time around. Whereas in Maryland, they really do get all four seasons. And I think that's a beautiful thing to have all four seasons and to be able to see it snowing. Um, Maryland is one of the most beautiful states that I have ever seen. Um, lots of natural beauty, lots of great land, just expansive. Um, so, you know, imagine just kind of being snuggled up and seeing the snowfall. Like that's, that's pretty awesome. I only got that once, I think since being in DC and I've only been here for three years, but I only got that one year so far. There are some people who in DC say you get four, all four seasons here, but I don't think it's the same. Um, you get spring, you get summer, you get fall. Yeah. But winter is not, not, nah, I don't think so. So definitely for weather, if you are a four season guy or a four season girl, then I think you might want to opt for Maryland instead of DC. As it relates to traffic, this is a tie for me because I've seen some horrendous traffic um, in Maryland and some horrendous traffic in DC. You have a lot of people who are working for the government who live in Maryland, but um, uh, they work in DC. So you'll see a lot of traffic coming into DC. You'll see a lot of traffic going out and into Maryland or going into Virginia at the end of the day. And so the traffic is just, it's just horrendous in the, in the DMV area. Um, I'm not too familiar with how traffic is like in Baltimore. Um, I've driven there several times and it just seems like free flowing. It doesn't seem like it's a, a big deal. Um, but if you're in that immediate DMV area and you're living, let's just say, um, where would you be living? Clinton, Maryland, or even Bowie. Oh my God, the traffic is crazy up there. It's like a nightmare on Elm Street. Um, uh, where else? Upper Marlboro. It's not so crazy, but it can be crazy at times. Um, you're definitely going to be dealing with traffic um, in Maryland as well. Uh, DC, I've already spoken about that uh, in my previous video. It's just a, a nasty, nasty situation with the traffic. Um, but the good thing is you could take public transportation here in DC, whereas in Maryland, you could take public transportation, but it's not as, to me, as effective as it is in DC. So another thing to consider. Traffic bad in both places, so just be prepared. So let's talk about taxes. When it comes to income taxes, taxes are much higher in the district. And I think I said this before, um, Maryland is, is significantly lower, but property taxes are lower in the district. And I think this is what kind, kind of like allows the, um, the cost of living to be comparable between the two places, the district and, and the state of Maryland. Um, because I feel like on some level they start to level out, you know, but you're definitely going to be paying more money in income taxes if you live here in the district. And uh, a lot of people have asked me this question as well, like, can you live in Maryland and work in DC and how does it work with the tax situation? Well, the DMV has a reciprocity agreement, so you can live in um, a neighboring state. You can live in DC and, and you can work in DC and live in, and live in a neighboring state and pay taxes only in the state that you are um, living in. So let's talk about uh, diversity. And I have some notes here because again, people are questioning, you know, what Maryland looks like. Uh, what's the, <clears throat> what's the, the, the demographic makeup they want to know? Listen, am I going to fit right in with Maryland? And how does it stack up against uh, DC? So uh, let me start. I, I said earlier that the population for Maryland was over 6 million people. And here is the breakdown when it comes to diversity. So for whites alone, it's 57.8%. So that's quite, a, that's a significant amount of white people living in the area and living in the state. Um, blacks, people who identified as black alone are, uh, came in at 31.4%. Um, Asian alone came in at 6.9% and American Indian 0.7%. Now, when we compare that with DC, DC again has a population of over 671,000 people, 45.9% of its residents identified as white alone, 45.8% uh, identified as black alone, 11.5% identified as Hispanic or Latino, and 4.5% identified as Asian alone. So when you're looking at the two numbers, there are more whites inside of Maryland and there are also more blacks inside of um, Maryland. Uh, Hispanic population was higher, I believe, in DC. Um, so when it comes to the diversity, uh, I definitely think DC, the numbers suggest, or state rather, that um, of course they have a more diverse mix. Um, but I see all types of people, uh, you know, I've, I've said before, uh, the Ethiopian population is represented very, very strongly in all three, in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Um, um, Eritrean as well. <clears throat> I see quite a number of Latinos and Hispanics in, in, in all three. So 
they're represented. It's definitely diverse. So let's talk about crime in DC versus crime in Maryland. I think I mentioned in my last video on the subject that DC has the highest crime rate in America compared to all communities of all sizes. Your chances of being a victim in DC, a property crime, I read this somewhere as one in 24. Um, that's, that's, that's pretty damned high. And also, um, according to FBI data, you, you know, you're more likely to be, or most likely to be robbed in DC versus any other place in America. That's scary, but that's the truth. That's also your tax dollars at work. And that's me being sarcastic, of course. Um, over in Maryland, the city with the highest total crime rate is Ocean City. Ooh, the place where a lot of tourists go um, to get to the beach, you know, and to just have a good, you know, summer fun. Like that's where they go for Ocean City. Yeah, that's the place with the highest total crime. And that's driven by property crime. Um, the most dangerous city in the state of Maryland is, do you want to take a guess? I'm sure some of you might get it, Baltimore. Baltimore has the highest violent crime in Maryland. Um, so, and it's, it's worse than DC. So this is just food for thought, you know, if you're going to consider Baltimore, I've been to Baltimore, but I've only been to Baltimore for like lunch or to hang out for the day. I have not lived there consistently where I feel, you know, I can give a qualified opinion about, Hey, you know, this is what's going on. I live in the district and I know what I've witnessed. I know what I've seen. So, you know, I, I could say I'm qualified to speak on that matter. Um, cause I'm sure that there are Baltimore residents who say, yes, that's what the statistics say, but I, you know, in our neighborhood, in our area is safe. Um, so that's just, you know, another thing to consider when you're making up your mind. As it relates to entertainment, I think DC wins out in this area. I've enjoyed going in Maryland. Um, there's some, some really nice spots for like dinner, go for lunch. Um, but it's not the place where I would say I want to go for like, oh, it's popping in Maryland. You know, it's just, it's just not like I would definitely give that to DC um, if you're going to compare the two. Uh, but I'm sure that they have really nice clubs and nice restaurants. I know that they have really nice restaurants and, um, you know, Bethesda is a nice area as well. Um, it's one of the wealthier areas, but, you know, for shopping and just hanging out, that sort of thing. But I feel like it's, it feels to me like um, almost like a nine to five town. So, I mean, things don't shut down at five o'clock, but um, it just feels that way. Like, okay, this, the town is going to sleep. Uh, whereas in DC, it just seems like there's always something popping, you know, in a nice area and you can go Northwest, you can go, you know, Northeast, you can go wherever and, you know, downtown. And it just, it just feels like there's always some sort of activity kind of like that vibe that you get from from living in like New York or something like that. Um, whereas I don't feel that in Maryland. So um, the entertainment options are plentiful in DC. Um, Maryland, they're okay. Um, so just something to consider again when you're making your decision. Anyway guys, I hope that this video was helpful. Like I said, the people who are going to more than likely watch this video are going to be those who are interested in moving to this area and they they're just trying to get some insight insight <laughs> trying to get some insight into what it could be like um in making their determination like i said it all boils down to you because i could talk about entertainment all day right but if you're not somebody who is like a social butterfly you don't need to get out like you prefer being home in suburbia you know like you know you may choose something completely different from what somebody else might choose your age will have a determining uh, factor most times on where you choose to live. If you have children, that's going to be a determining factor. Um, the type of money that you have is going to be a determining factor. That's why I say that there's no, you know, I can say, you know, which one is the better place to live or which of the three is the best place to live, but it all is going to boil down to your finances, where you are in your life, um, you know, your social circumstances, all those things are going to be determining factors as to where you live. I think the DMV on the whole is a good option, but you have to have some money here for sure just to just to just to make it to be honest with you it's a struggle for me i'm not even gonna lie to you like i sometimes think like do i want to live here long term i know i have to get my money up if i really want to live in the places that i want to live and be where and do the things that i want to do i got to get my money up big time so um but it's a beautiful beautiful area to live in i love i love being able to drive into virginia drive into maryland and be in the district it's it's top notch anyway guys i'll see you all next week wednesday at one o'clock eastern standard time um and don't forget to follow me on instagram at this Bahamian gal on my blog at www.thisbahamiangal.com on facebook as well at this Bahamian gal 
And what else? Don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And if you know somebody who's thinking about moving to this area, please forward this video to them. And for those of you who are inquiring about Virginia, you can see my video it was like two weeks ago on DC versus Virginia. Thank you so much. And I'll see you all next week, Wednesday, one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Mwah! I love you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.